smoky. After building the world's craziest pickup truck, I don't even know what it is. Nice to but see you, we friend. haven't seen in a long a time. long years. What's up guys, welcome to the next video from our US tour. I left Connecticut, I left Jimmy Oaks behind. Neil unfortunately had to go back to work in JDM Distro, but we are planning some future trips, me and Neil, down the line, more on that later. We are here in SEMA in Vegas. We've never been here before. And if I was gonna replace Neil with some compatriots to share my journey through SEMA, well it might as well be these two Egypts. The boys have landed. They've made it finally. And we're, we're on-air personalities. On-air personality Adam O'Connor and... I'm just a videographer. Just a videographer. He's press. Red press. press. Actually, yeah. Press. Just, just press. <laughs> press. Press to turn them on. <laughs> Alright guys, we're at CMA. It's one of the biggest car shows in the world. We've never been here before. It's like the universal studio of car shows. Already there's too much to take in. We're not going to be able to film everything. We're going to try and film our standouts from the show. The stuff we find cool. And there's going to be a lot over the next couple of videos. So bear with us. Let's go for a ramble around CMA. This is just the walkway into the show that we're going into now. We attempted to walk in and I, this spot, my, the corner of my eye, we're obviously big fans of TJ Hunt and he said there was going to be another wide body 86 and that is just... Millennium Jade, wide body. T 300 wide body. HRE wheels. HRE wheels. There's a good improvement on these 86s, I think. Big jump. I drove Jimmy's and it's like a lot more power than the GT86. GT86 is a bit feeble, but... I think these are like the right little balance. And that is just they're a much smoother design, I think, as well. Right, it's going to be, oh, that's the car to show. But there's going to be, there's going to be that 12,000 times in this video. So for now, that's my car to show. I haven't made it inside yet. We started the vlog over there. <laughs> yeah. OK, so there's no ignoring the elephant in the room at SEMA is the big lifted trucks, which I'm sure everyone in America thinks is pretty naff. But from Ireland, the big trucks make us feel like little children. Well, it's saying that a Ford Raptor is a big truck for us, so these are like gargantuan things. But they're on like tiny wheels, or tiny tires. I mean, I've heard of stretch before, but never look at stretch on an off. Look at the back of them. Stretch off road tire. The attention to detail underneath. Yeah, underneath the crazy. Everything chrome plated. The leaf, the leaf springs are powder coated. The attention to detail on these, because they're lifted, you can obviously see underneath them more, which means that you've got to, this is the stuff you hide on a JDM car when it's low, that no one sees anything, it's so low. The opposite on a lifted truck, you've got to do everything perfect underneath it. Look at this one. Like it's just absolutely spotless. You have to clean all of this under the truck, it's crazy. Also, these are tame compared to some of the other ones here, so we'll catch up with them in a bit, but just to give you an intro. You look tiny compared to them. <laughs> just like nuts. Pretty usual. This is just some of the subtle stuff here, some of the more tastefully modified stuff that, you know, OEM plus. I just, we had this thought, what if you were to buy this, bring it to Ireland, and then just bring this to an NCT center and say, just trundle it in and just see what they would have to deal with. It's not gonna, the, the, the tracks are outside the body, so like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, you know, yeah. It's an instant fail, really. It's an instant yeah, fail. Your, your Sauce is probably a bit too loud. The, the tracks would be the least of your worries. I don't even know why this exists, but I'd like to see it move, but... Very small car, very big tracks. SEMA. All right, so we're on a hunt today for the most American over-the-top stuff we can find. This exhaust, uh, it's, it's an exhaust with American flags, CNC. We've got a lot of... It, this is nice. You can choose your, your height of your tow bar. I don't think you'd ever have it. <laughs> One going up there. How big is the I'm not sure what towing? trailer you're going to... 
Dave, you saying the size of this, Dave? This, no, this must be the fanciest tow bar in the history of the world. Sorry. I'm just, Dave, just, just, just look back. Yeah, but it's got no tow bar. I think they went beyond tow bars with this. Where would you even attempt to put the tow bar on this? Like your fat. Look in the underneath, you can just stand here and look. The arch is eating you. Yeah. <laughs> the shock is at my head height. Nothing makes sense about this. But then you, you turn directly behind him. It's just like it just like a map. My brain thing. can't comprehend yeah. the level of like slammed high, low, wide, sure. up, yeah. down. Yeah. yeah, here. There's race a car. fox body, race car, massive monster truck. I that think could literally go over that without even realizing. There's you no can almost fast and furious underneath us, you know, when like they drive <laughs> underneath, like like in through the middle. But like everything is so extreme, which I love. I absolutely love it. There's no need for any of it, but it's great. I'm not too sure what what, what this is about. Oh, it's to say to other women that they should cheat on their man with you because you've got the big white truck. Subtly, obviously. <laughs> a, a subtle. I mean, you wouldn't really notice this driving around town, would you? I don't even know what to say. It's ridiculous. It's great. It's, every, it's everything I wanted more. It's everything I didn't know that I wanted. <laughs> that is a, that's a glass off yeah. moment. Classic Jeff Goldblum moment there. Son of a bitch, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> My God. What has happened here? That's half a Lamborghini and half. There's a hurricane <laughs> somewhere. I'm not sure if the rear is. Ferrari get mad when you mess with the cars. I don't think Lamborghini have that issue because if they did, this man would have all of the season assists. Oh, there's a LS. So this is the BS for Bilbao. As far as I know, this was a wrecked car. So this is why it looks like this. This was a crash car that they rebuilt. So there wasn't as much like oh, the purists weren't going to say they ruined the Lamborghini because I think it was already ruined. I can't help but say as well, why would you take a V10 out and put an LS in? Josh, there's only three letters for that. U-S-A. <laughs> so those tires are a 345 on the back. I never think I've ever seen a 345 before. 345, and look at the stretch on a 345. So, what do we have here? So, we've got here we got ourselves a goddamn race truck. That's what we got ourselves here. Got ourselves a situation here. It's usually just like business in the front and party in the back. This is just party boat ends. I'm not sure what engine that is. It's a truck engine, like an LT motor or a small box Chevy. I'll be corrected on that, but it's not a modern motor. But they do have twin turbos. One of the highest cars of the show. One of the lowest cars of the show here. Literally the lowest car of the show. How can you physically get into this? I'm pretty sure my dog is the only person to get into this car. Yeah. I think he was short up. We've seen this on, on the way up to the media centre to collect our on air personality badges earlier on. And I am a massive, massive. Go on, get in there. Rat rods. Oh. oh. Just give it a high perspective there, dude. That's a death wish in there. That is just metal surrounded by metal. Yeah, so we put a few sound systems in cars over the last year or two on drift games. You know, we struggled a little bit with an amp and a sub, and uh, here everyone just takes it to the extreme. What is. Has he just gone into a shop and said, Can I get all of the speakers? Every speaker you have, please. Ridiculous. Where do you stop? We do, we do need a new sound system for the bash. We do, I think we found it. I think we found it. You just run the whole bash off one, yeah. one truck. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. I think it's a car designed to look like it's doing a wheelie, but it's not doing a wheelie. It's like the front is up, and if you move to the back. The whole car is on a slant. I'm not too sure. Body off, but have a look at the interior. The interior is it's, it's actually pretty much what it's lovely. Ooh, told you, tasteful, lovely. It's got rust, but then it's clear coated. This is all candy clear coat. I don't know, I don't know what that means. 
But like rust is the novelty to Americans. Yeah, that's right. Whereas for us it's just the common thing. Yeah. That's when you R- watch for us rust is like a bad thing. For them it's like, oh how how uh, alternative. Uh, how, how cool it's it's rusting. Uh, it's a familiar sights and sounds now. The eight and the smoke. The smell of smoke. And we're like we're safe. We know where we are. We've got away from the lifted trucks and we're back with drifting. Comfort zone. This is, this is our safe zone, right? Every so often we'll just come back here. Third time I've seen Adam in three different states in the last week and a half, so there you go. Weirdly, this week you've seen Adam more than me. Oh, Jesus. I wish we could do that every week. It's a bit harsh. Last time I got a passenger spin with Adam, he crashed on the first lap. Hopefully this one's a bit longer. Up. Nice to but see people you, man. We friend. haven't seen in a long, a time. long years, man. It's been years, but way back in the day, last time I saw you was maybe like Saudi Arabia or something like that. It would have been Saudi or when I was in Ireland for in Ireland for uh, like 2011. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know, 13 ago. or 14. But, but yeah. the boys are here. They're showing up. Josh has got a spin out in uh, Adam's car there. These are rowdy. These are the demo cars. Yeah. Though. But they're still like, compared to what we would call demo cars, these are still pretty capable. Yeah, so it's basically um, mine and Adam's car are FD chassis. Chelsea's car is actually the car I did Drift King in the Ring in. So that was one of our first builds of the must, this Mustang chassis. But these are basically FD chassis um, as far as the unibody. But the subframes are different and the drivetrains are different. Just to be a little bit more affordable to run, it's got the production Coyote in it with a supercharger. They make about 750 horsepower. Yeah, nothing really. Synchro yeah, so gearbox, it's got a uh, T56 Magnum that, in it. And then you're talking wheels, so you always have to say to our European viewer, that's over 800 horsepower fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a demo, just yep. reliable demo car. Yeah, well, yeah, when we go to grid life and we're at these big tracks, you know, we need the power. So that's for true. stuff like this, we could be fine with just NA, you know, 450, 500, but this works and they're super reliable. And, so and you're fun. doing like two hours of driving with 800 horsepower in yeah. these. And yeah, we staying. do an hour each day, or an hour each session. A lot on the car. Day. Yeah, it is, but they, they they run, man. I mean, these are basically, this is what comes in the five liter Mustangs. It's yep. a Coyote, but these are Illuminator spec, so they have, it's a Ford Performance crate motor, has forged internals, and we just beat them hard, and they we like it. That. Well, listen, yeah. enjoy the rest of the hey, show. Nice Great to, to see catch you, man. Up Wonderful, baby. We'll see you out one evening. Absolutely, we'll catch uh, up with you. Cheers, bro. I'll say we kind of underestimated the outside. We've been, wa- we've been walking about a kilometer or two kilometers now, and we still haven't got. Like, look how far this bit goes. Like, the scale of this event is has to be seen to be believed because we all heard how big SEMA is. Oh, it's so big, you'll never get around it. We haven't even got inside yet. That's the bigger I part. I wouldn't even say we've covered half of outside. It's as low as more. It's only not even halfway across. So, like, this is. This is a very good complaint. This is not, this is not giving out. But it's it's just about as big as Navin, yeah. this show. <laughs> it's about as big as Navin in general. Yeah. Is it what? I think it's a locust, is it? Yeah, a little... It's like a grasshopper. Just chilling. That's, the, that's a big one. Just chilling there. Not too bothered moving. That's his pick of the show. Yeah. Basically, his pick of the show is I'm staying here. This is the best car here. 
after about two hours we made it on the inside of the show to one of four halls Something more major. Can't stop me now, you can't stop me. Can't stop me now, you can't stop me. Need I remind you in case you forgot? You know what? Just want to take a second in this video to thank one of our partners at Drift Games, Mobile One Oil. They run everything from stuff like this to our street cars and our drift cars. Mobile One are the best in the business. If you want to grab some Mobile One products in Ireland, check out oil.ie. Hi, me is TJ Hunt's RX7, Fortune RX7. You guys will probably recognize this kit mostly from. Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, this is Hans car, but this is a reimagining of that in green. Blitz 03s, excellent execution, whopper car. Yeah, when, he said, when he said he was doing it, I was like, oh, I don't know how it's going to turn out, because I thought he was going to do like a carbon carbon copy, but the colour, the wheels. It's really nice. I think it's like a nice tribute. Yeah, that's a good It's a nice, nice tribute to the car. And what's crazy about it is that the only bit of RX-7 you can see in it is just the roof line. Everything else is completely changed. That's what me and Adam were saying yesterday, like, like the doors, every single line is different. There's no original line of the car. Like the rear of the the rear car, rear of the car is completely reimagined. Yeah. I even think you look at the rear window. It's like the split window on the back. So we're here with Ryan. What's up, brother? I haven't brother? seen you in a I while. know. I haven't seen since I went, went over and competed with you yeah, guys. Yeah, Global Warfare yeah. 1 or 2, I'm not too sure, but yeah. it was a good time. Yeah. We come back over here and he's after building the world's craziest pickup truck. I don't even know what it is. So what, so model, what model is this? It's a Toyota and it's uh, it's probably the first Toyota truck that has ever been sold in the US. So it's called a, it's called a Toyota Stout. Never and heard it's, of it. Uh, 1966. So wow. well before all of us have been were born. This is pre Hilux, pre everything. Yeah, pre. This is this is what this is the first generation of all the mini, mini to, trucks. Was it hard to find one? Uh, it wasn't super. Good. We kind of lucked out. We found one in SoCal, in San Diego. Okay. We just did some basic searching, but they're definitely harder to get. But if you know where to look, you're gonna find something, right? So I'm just trying to get my head around this. So this is obviously a custom kit for this because I've. This is, yep. We were saying it's similar in proportion somewhat to the Huna truck and kind of how it pumps right. out. Well, they're both mini. Well, the Huna truck is actually a lot bigger. It's a bigger truck. Yeah. But this was like a smaller, this more like kind of streetable one. Exactly. Yeah. And it's just one of the older mini truck situations that you have or had here in the U.S. Like you're like you were talking about, and then uh, John Sabal did all the body work and or the body design on it, and then. Uh, we were able to have budget to get like CNC molds made, so it came out freaking absolutely perfect the way that the pictures were and rendered. It's got this like old school mobile livery on it, like kind of a... Yep, yeah, little throwback livery. We wanted yeah. to use the Pegasus instead of having just the mobile one uh, written out. And uh, and then since uh, it's also in, in with Toyota, the uh, TRD boys let us throw it on for the truck build. So, so let, me, let me think, so if this was was truly America, this would have a massive LS3 twin turbo <laughs> thing. But I feel because it's you, it'll be tastefully done. So, 3S GTE. 3S GTE? Yeah. So wow. I, wanted it, I wanted it to be a four cylinder, and I was going to do the 2A RFE that Steph built yeah. in the, for the pro car. And he, when I had to make the decision for the, for the drivetrain in his car, in his truck, I, he was undecided whether he was going to continue on uh, with those engines. Yeah. So I couldn't make a decision on his indecisiveness. So I just said, all right, well, I want a four cylinder. Toyota's got a good platform with the 3S GTE. So I went down that rabbit hole and- uh, The craziest thing is that yeah. I'm just building an S15. 
with a 3 SGE. Shut up! Yep. What do you need to know? So three, <laughs> I'm building a 3 SGE uh, S15. That's sick. With, with an Altesa gearbox. And I was just saying, I haven't heard this engine mentioned in like years. You're right. And all well, of a sudden, it, it was in all the MR2s yeah, yeah. and, and Celicas back in, back then, but it's like, it's come, it's now coming around again because all that stuff fell off in like the late yeah. 2000s. And then it's kind of cheap again, which yeah. is good. So there you go, yeah. folks. Ryan Turk, 3SGE, you heard it here first. Actually, I couldn't believe that's the engine that's in this, but it has like, I'm gonna say a lot more going on. It's like a Winters in the back of this or yeah, something. Winter. So we ba- we built it to like you know a Formula Drift Pro level drifting. As truck. you do with a 1966 Toyota pickup well, truck. Right, yeah. right. So yeah, we. I mean, you, we're gonna be using it for demos at multiple tracks. I did. And I'm at the point in my career where I want a nicely set up car wherever I drive. So it's nice to be able to have that option. Hollinger six speed sequential. Um, and then, yeah, the 3S. We're only going to make about six, 650 out of the engine. We're going to make half that and be very happy with it, but yeah. that's a lot of power out of one of those. We're only going to be spinning 275, so it's not, you know, we don't have to make but a ton. But you know what's funny? I was thinking about drifting this. Like, you'll be sitting very upright compared to another a drift. Bit, like, yeah. a little bit kind of yeah. straight up. Sit in, the, sit in the thing. It's got more room than you think. One of the biggest design challenges was giving me the leg room I needed in the chassis oh, and see, still yeah. be able to make the manifolds on the, on the engine. Oh, it's like, not too bad. It's if you had if you had race shoes on, and you're bigger than me, taller than me. That's not bad. It's not terrible. You could drive that. Yes. Yeah. Even though it, this is quite small. It's literally the wheel to body ratio. But then your legs have loads of room. Yeah. It's yeah. A small engine. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. This thing is I, I love the, the old the school patina yeah. on the dash. Yeah. Like it's all old school. The little. I can Like I wish we could keep the chassis on painted, but it's just gonna rust. So we're gonna have to paint it eventually. No, it's, easy to get out. it's actually easier than a drift car to get it out of. Because <laughs> you're stepping like up, yeah, you're stepping it. up out of it. I love that you didn't like absolutely put it back to perfection. You left a little bit of character in it. It wasn't meant to be like that, to be honest. Oh really? But it just ran out of time. So like, I, I wanted this, to. Get I the, love the fight base. Like that I, that's what everybody's been saying. I'm like, for me, like when but I came into the project, I'm like, ah, oh, it just looks unfinished to me. But I like that. I I, I understand the patina side of it, so it's cool. Again, you can go either way. I know, I know. Well, thanks so much, yeah. man, for catching up and Thank showing you. us the truck. Yeah. This thing is just wild. And Ryan, we can't wait to see it shred some tires in the future. All right, guys, that brings day one of SEMA to a close. It's been tiring. We've done a lot of walking. We've met a lot of cool people, saw a lot of cool cars, and we haven't even scratched the surface yet of how many amazing things are at this show. So what I want to do is finish the video here. We're going to go partying in Vegas. We're going to catch up with the Hoonigan guys. We're going to do all that stuff in a future episode. But for now, we're going to chop this edit up, get it out to you guys as quick as possible. And the adventure in Las Vegas is going to get wilder from here. I promise you that. See you on the next one.